G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, a while back I did a couple of videos on uh, a beginner's guide to collets in two parts, and I tried to get across to people uh, how useful collets were and uh, how they could easily, you know, do things that chucks, conventional chucks, would find difficult, if not impossible. And for the small outlay that a collet set is, you know, really, uh, and a little bit of inconvenience you've got to have with it by taking the chuck off and things like that. The flexibility and the, you know, the extension in your metal work that you get out of it is just fantastic. And uh, I'm sure that majority of small hobby lathe users never ever take on collets. You've only got to look at the lathes being sold. You never see a collet set. And <laughs> even second-hand collet sets are pretty light. You know, people just don't move, don't move them around much. It's just not... I don't think there's, there's the use of them that, uh, that it warrants. So, what am I coming to? Well, the other day I, um, I had a bit of spare time and, uh, of course, like everybody, I've got sets of taps and dies and I've got good sets and cheap sets. This is a cheap set. It's a good little set. Taiwanese. I oh, know, this one's Japanese. Oh, well, there you go, upmarket. Uh, and I've had it for 30 years. And these have the little 25 mil, um Taps, uh, dies in them, and of course taps. You can see I've replaced a lot of them over the years with better quality ones. These are good stuff. But anyway, um, so I've had a long time. Anyway, I've never ever had a tailstock die holder. I've always just used a, the conventional holder or, you know, I got by. And I thought, oh, well, you know, I've got a bit of time. It's hot, hot weather, I can't work. And that's like 41 degrees. So I thought I'll do a bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of metal work. And... Uh, so I hunted through my scrap bin and here's an old stub axle I had lying down there that was years old. And uh, I cut through it to see what it was like and it cut good, it was uh, nice, gave off nice cuttings. You know, it was good quality steel. I mean with this old steel you never know, some of it's pretty bad, pretty poor, uh, too much, uh, too much uh, carbon in it or bad forging and you find when you cut this stuff, if you ever want to cut old steel and get an idea of what it's like. Uh, if the cuttings come off, there's little flakes, nice flakes, you, you're generally pretty good, but, but if it comes off as a sort of powdery dust, uh, I wouldn't touch it. And uh, in this case, um, I took a section out, as you can see, and I made myself up a, a little die holder, which goes in the tailstock, or, or all the, you put it in the chuck if you want to, if you need it to, but not that that would be very common. Um, and it machined up beautifully, you know, it's nice. And uh, it's got a half inch um, feed through on it. So you can't use this in a in a 13 mil chuck. In a tail stock, you'd have to have a three quarter or a collet. And this is why, you know, I always now use collet um, system, collet chuck in the tail stock. And of course it doesn't mark your drills, doesn't tear them up. Uh, it won't tear up your, uh, your nice pretty um, a die holder when it jams um, so yeah it holds it like a leech and uh, it uh, it won't won't damage anything so collets are great so what am I leading to well in this particular job I had to uh, make up the little grub screw that uh, comes in and uh, holds the holds the die and it's got a you can see the die's got a recess in it and that mates with the little screw there. And uh, I used a, just now I had a bolt. I could have used a, a grub screw, but I didn't have one quite long enough. Of course, if you use a conventional Allen headed bolt, the end on it is the wrong shape. Uh, you've got a depression here, and of course, as you can see, this six millimeter bolt is, uh, is too big. It wouldn't go in. So I had to, had to shape the end of the, uh, the, end of the bolt. Now, okay, I could have done it on the grinder just by hand, but that's a pretty crappy way of doing it, really. So I wanted to hold this in the uh, in the lathe and machine it, machine an end on it, which I've done. Now, if I was to do that with a conventional chuck, the, the three jaws would be the only thing that's gripping that particular head you'd have to put that in the jaws like that and then you machine right on the end of the bolt now that's a recipe for disaster with a conventional chuck 
if that catches, and you've only got to do very light cuts to do these sort of jobs, but if that catches, <laughs> you can easily do, it's going to just wrench that, that bolt around in the three jaw chuck, and it will just tear the bejesus out of it and, and probably bend it at the same time. So this is where a collet comes in, because collets can grip stuff like that very safely. They get full grip all the way around, and I'll just do another one. I, want, I mean, this job's done, but I'll get an old bolt out the same size, and I'll just show you how a collet would easily, uh, you know, do that job, make the job a piece of cake, really. So, hang in there. I hope you find it interesting. Right, well, here's the sort of chuck that most hobbyists would use. Three jaw scroll. This one's a five inch. And uh, when we open the jaws, you can see they're serrated like all jaws. And as you're gripping a very small bolt, the six mil bolt, by the head, you're only gripping it on these, this little portion here. So we put it in and we do up our chuck. Now, when you do put in something like this and it's very small, uh, there is a way to actually align the, the thing square without too much trouble and I'll, I'll show that in a minute. But you can see, looking at that, how poorly it, it's being held. Not poorly in so much as the three jaws are gripping it, but the depth of the grip. You know, any decent leverage on the end of that is just going to wrench it out of those jaws and the job will be destroyed. And I mean, you're machining hard steel here, it's not candy steel, it's, uh, it's high tensile. So, you want that thing to be held as well as possible. Also, if you ever machine a job like this, you never ever use carbide on something like this. With, you know, there's just too much pressure required. You would use high speed steel and you would do very, very light cuts. I mean, you might get away with doing it like this if you really pull this up super hard and really went careful. But in my opinion, this is almost doomed to failure, those sort of jobs. It's just uh, bad news. And, you know, if you want to grip something like this, to work on something like this, you want to grip it all the way around that head, and that's what a collet does. So, OK, um, we'll set it up in the, uh, in the, in the other lathe, the little Shorblin, and uh, which is fitted out for collets. And uh, I'll show you how we align the job and also how the collet grips it, and we'll, uh, we'll machine the end of the bolt. Right, well here, here we have my secondary lathe, which is a, um, an old Shorblin. This has a threaded spindle, so, and it doesn't have a, a Morse taper in the spindle, so I had to make up a collet mount for this, a collet chuck. But if you're using a conventional modern lathe, which you would, or your existing lathe, you know, which is a modern lathe, and it's almost certainly going to have a, a Morse taper in the spindle, if it's a small one, up to say 10 inch, and you can buy a, an ER collet chuck cheaply off the internet or wherever and it just goes into the spindle a draw rod comes in from the other end and it pulls it in and does the same job so okay whatever you're using you get the collet which is the right diameter to hold the job and it just clips in that's why I like ER this is quick and easy to use and they've got good compression range so you now put in your job and you push it back so it's in about a quarter of an inch from the end. So it's gripping away from the end of the collet. You pull it up finger tight like that. Then you move your cross slide out of the way. Well, your position so you can bring up the tail slide and we're going to use the tail slide to align that bolt because a lot of bolts they're not exactly perfectly made and you might find that the head may uh, be a little bit misshapen or something. So we're going to try and get as accurate as possible. And to do that, we're going to use a drill chuck in the tailstock. We bring it up and we open her up, feed it over the bolt at a reasonable distance and then we, we pull it up just onto the bolt. 
loosen off the loosen off the uh, oops let's get it right back a bit that's right just get it loose so that as you pull up the, the chuck you don't have to go real hard you want to mark the thread and then once that's just located the bolt then you tighten up your your collar as normal so in this case we're going to get us pull her up now and that will keep everything aligned and it's it's going to be as good as you're going to get the alignment pretty good so once again the collet doesn't matter how you hard you pull that up you can pull that up as hard as you want that's the beauty of collets not only is it gripping it all the way around the, the head of the bolt to give perfect grip uh, you're also doing it up with a big wrench like this rather than a chuck key so you can really really pull these mothers up tight and that will stop any chance of it moving right now we just back off our chuck push our tail stock out the way and we're ready to go so the next part of the exercise will be to machine the end of the bolt and in this particular case I'm just going to take a bit off the end and uh, as you can see I'm using a high speed steel cutter dead on the centre line, you've got to have it dead on the centre line you don't want it coming in below centre definitely or it can jag it so you want this right on the centre line and uh, you're good to go so we will First I'll put a bit of oil in the old Shorby and, uh, and then we'll come back for video. machine the end of it. job done. Easy as that. Now that was quite safe doing that job and uh, as you can see it's, uh, it's turned out well. We'll do a bit more to show it wasn't a fluke. <laughs> there you have it job done and uh, 
no dramas whatsoever. And as you can see, um, the collar that, you know, is gripping the, the head of the bolt, the uh, high tensile bolt, all the way around perfectly. That was quite a, a safe job. It was a no drama job. But if you were to do that in a conventional three or four jaw chuck, well, uh, good luck is all I can say because anybody that's done any amount of machining will know exactly what I'm talking about. If that cutter catches the end of that bolt, it's, uh, it's good night, Dick, I'll tell you right now. So, what have we got to? Well, as a follow-up to the uh, early videos, I hope it's given you a bit more insight into what collets can do, um, how they're excellent for holding dodgy work like that, and uh, also it's a, it's a good reason to think about getting a set of collets and an even better reason to think about maybe getting a, a second smaller lathe. So like the old Shulman here, which I use permanently set up for, uh, for collet work, it's great. It saves me swapping over uh, the chucks on the, on the big lathe. You can have uh, your normal lathe to do your big work and you can have a small unit to... Uh, to just do the fiddly stuff, the collet work, and uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with small lathes. Uh, they're fantastic, you know. And it annoys me at times when I, I look at forum conversations and people with big lathes look down on people with small lathes. They seem to regard them as second-class citizens, which is rather sad, really, because those little lathes are basically what makes all the small stuff tick. And uh, yeah. They're great. So there you go. Good excuse to buy yourself a second hand 7x14. Set it up um, as a purely collet machine. And uh, flood up your workshop a bit more. <laughs> okay, folks, that's it. I hope you found it interesting. And certainly, yep, get into collets. Doesn't cost a lot to get set up. And you'll just find the more you use them, the more you appreciate them and realise just how good they really are. Okay, I'll see you next time. Cheers.